Yes, boneless beef chuck short ribs. The chuck short ribs come from closer to the shoulder area of the chuck on the cow. And just like chuck roast, they need time to develop their tenderness and flavor. But these are some sizable boneless chuck ribs here. Total of about six pounds. This is USDA prime. We've got some really nice marbling here, as you can see. And I'm gonna be smoking these tomorrow, seasoning them tonight, which is something I do often. You've seen it in my videos. Really gives these a chance to absorb that flavor overnight. And the rub I'm gonna be using today is Southern Bell from Gulf Coast Smoke. Don't really need a binder on here. There's good surface moisture. These are just out of the cryovac. And I'm just gonna start seasoning these up. I get a good coating on all sides and the ends. I'm not really gonna do any trimming on this. I want that fat that's there. There's not too much on the outside. Make sure you get those ends. We're gonna be doing this on the Hunsaker drum smoker tomorrow, but you could do these on the kettle, on the pellet grill, anything you got. The offset. I've done these exact ribs on the kettle before. You can also do these in the slow cooker, in the oven. It's really just about getting them to the state of tenderness. It's gotta give them that time. These are probably gonna go, if we were just going by internal temperature, somewhere around 208 but it's gonna be about the tenderness, not just the temperature. Make sure we get a good coating here. Make sure we get that end. All right, those are looking good. I'm gonna cover these loosely with a plastic wrap, just draping it over the top. It's gonna to go in the refrigerator. I'll see you tomorrow outside at the smoker. So the Hunsaker Vortex drum smoker is up to temp. It's gonna be at 275 degrees today. That's really kind of the sweet spot for this smoker. It really likes that temperature. Now I have some pieces of post oak for smoke today, and I did add water, as you saw, a small water pan just to keep a little moisture in the chamber. So let's go ahead and get these boneless beef chuck short ribs on. We're gonna let that go. We're gonna let that fire settle down after that influx of oxygen from opening the lid. I'll adjust the vents as necessary, and we'll come back in about an hour and give them a look. All right, we've been going one hour. We'll open this up and take a look in a second, but I often get questions as to why I don't always put an ambient probe or a remote probe in here. Well, one of the reasons is on days like this, I'm just sitting close to the smoker. I don't need that remote sort of look where I can see if I'm further away and can't observe it directly. And I also know that on the Hunsaker, the thermometer is very accurate. And as for the short ribs, I'll be checking that with the Thermapen 1 as we get closer to that time when it might be getting close to wrapping it. So let's take a look. Ah, those are looking good. The surface is looking a little dry, so I'm just gonna spritz these with some plain water. All right, I'm gonna close this up and we'll check these again in another hour. All right, we've been going two hours now. Let's take a look and we're also gonna do a quick temp check just to kind of see where we are. Looking nice. Let's go in here and just kind of get a gauge where we're at. Showing 152 degrees there. 147 here, so still a while to go. Probably, I'm guessing, we're not gonna end up wrapping these till between three and four hours. I'm gonna give these a quick little spritz and we're gonna close it up, let them keep going. We'll check these again in 90 minutes. All right, we've been going three and a half hours. Let's check these. I think it's probably about time to wrap them. Internal temperature is 165 degrees. 
That one's around 159, 158. Got good color, good bark development on the outside, so it's definitely time to wrap these. It's gonna give it a little extra moisture here, the plain water. Nice and tight, and back on. I'm gonna close that up and we'll check this again in about an hour. So we've been going about four and a half hours now. Let's check our temperature and tenderness. Can't really say they look good because they're in foil, but they smell good. So I'm gonna go through the top layers of foil and I really don't wanna go through the bottom, so I'm gonna be careful here. See our temperature showing 195 on that one. Let's go over here. And that one's showing 206. So this one's really moving well. I'm gonna take one more reading on this one. That's 198 right there. So I'm gonna go about another half hour and I'm pretty sure both those are gonna be done. The one's gonna be probably right above 208. The other one's gonna be 205 to 208. When they're done, I'm gonna let them rest for about half an hour and then we'll cut into them. So the next time I see you, I'll be inside. These will be done and rested. Well, here is one of our boneless beef chuck short ribs. Now, it's been resting about half an hour. It is still extremely hot, but I don't have any insulators in my glove right now, so I'll just deal with it. But let's cut in, see how we did. Might as well go straight down the middle here. Let's see. That is juicy. Oh, yes. Let's cut a few slices here. Cut some long ways here. Sometimes it's a little bit like the brisket point. It just pulls apart. Ow, that is hot and juicy. And I'm just gonna cut myself some pieces right here to taste. Now you can eat this just like this, or you could put it in a bun and make a nice, almost like barbecue beef sandwich, but I just wanna taste this right now. Let's see. Beefy, beefy, beefy. Certain cuts give you that. There are others, but this right here, just with a simple rub, you could use any rub you want or just some salt and pepper or some SPG. The rub just enhances the flavor, but it is the beefiness here that is amazing. Oh man, I'm a big fan of chuck roast when they're cooked properly, and this is very similar. If you just give it that time to get tender, to retain those juices, you got a winner. Oh. 